One of our favorite people, and he's just not around enough, unfortunately. Jim Jeffries in studio once again. Hello. Because he's a world done... guy. Huh? He's a world guy. I'm, I'm worldly. He's a world That's what you think when you look at me. I'm very You're worldly. worldly. <laughs> we have two world guys. I'm very well traveled. Yes. We got a lot of uh, USA guys. And yep. we have Who's a few your other U- world guy? Who's I'm going to tell you in a second. We have a oh. lot of USA guys. We have a few USA Canada guys. And then we have two world guys. You're one of them with uh, Russell Peters. Oh. He's a world guy guy as well. I does think it, that's it. For doesn't us. Russell Brand come on in a bit? No, he came on once. Yeah, he's a dick. <laughs> he really is a dick. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind him. I've met him a couple of yeah. times. Yeah. You, what do you, you reckon? Must have, you, you must have partied with him. No, he doesn't take anything oh, anymore. Man. Yeah, I got in trouble. I think I told this story ages ago on the air about him that, that he fucked Manuel from Faulty Towers as granddaughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Manuel, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I fucked her when she was 17. And wow. Bragged, I mean, she's, but legal in Britain, completely legal. Oh, yeah, 17 is legal in New York. Le- too. Legal. And, <laughs> and she's, she's, her name's uh, Georgina Bailey, if you want to Google it. All right. Have I, told, have I told this Danny before? Ross yeah, is yeah, on, the, on the fucking shit. Who cares? It's Friday. We want to get the fuck out of here, so... Well, I, I, Whatever I, gets us to 10. I plied her full of drugs. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there she's there with the, with the, with the wacky eye. Oh, she's yeah, a, yeah, oh yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. She has a... I thought it was the one to the right with the wacky eye. No, no, eyes. no. The, she, as I said, she's a dance, in, in a dance oh. troupe called the Satanic Sluts. Oh, man. Wow, she, she's hot, man. Yes. Um, she's got all her teeth. She's got yeah. kind of a Feruza look to yeah, her a little yeah, bit. Yeah, for a British girl, pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. A lot of teeth. <laughs> Manuel's... <laughs> you get that mascara dripping but, down her face? But when he came out and told all the media and stuff and said that he, he'd fucked her... Yeah, people went yeah. bananas because he rang up the grandfather and said, I fucked your granddaughter. Is that her? Was the big story. Yeah, that's her. I punched that up. Wow, that's, that's her, all right. right. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Whoa! Ah, booby. All yeah, right, that's real. pretty goddamn good. Yeah. Almost, almost knocked her. All right, Jim Jeffries. Imagine, imagine yeah. it at 17. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it was pretty good. How'd you score I enjoyed that? those tits. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> 17? What about the one? I can't stop doing that now. What about the one on her back there? Has she got a sex tape now, has she? Oh, shit. Oh, geez, I've been You're away. You're in it. Wait Whoa. a minute, Jim Jeffries. Oh, no, that's just her with another chick. Ah. Oh, well, that's not even, that's real, that's posed. Mm-hmm. No, she, uh, yeah, she's grubby, little thing. Yeah. That's what? nice. She's a little Is fucking Is she famous, whore. though? That's, she's famous great. because of the incident. That's about uh-huh. it, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the whole thing when I met, I met, like, uh, Russell Brand was in this bar and Noel Gallagher was there. And Noel Gallagher walked out, and I just went up to Russell and went, you caused me a lot of trouble with that whole news story, because then the media started asking me, and I couldn't say I fucked her when she was 17, so I just lied to everyone. <laughs> like, like, to the British media, I lied to them forever. And he goes, and Russell in Russell mode went, oh, I'm ever so sorry, I didn't mean to cause you such a fuss. And, and then Noel Gallagher walks in, and I got all freaked out because I love Oasis. And those two are oh, chatting. Oh, hates Oasis. Yeah, ah. and, and, I love it. And they're, they're <laughs> chatting, and uh, and uh, Noel Gallagher goes, "Who's this guy?" And Russell goes, "Oh, I'm ever so sorry. It's Jim Jeffries." And he goes, "Hey, what do you do?" And instead of saying, "I'm a comedian," I went, "I fucked Manuel's granddaughter as well." <laughs> Manuel's granddaughter. Are you really famous in Britain? Uh, Me? Yeah. I'm not famous famous, but I do all right. Yeah, if, if you're into stand-up comedy, you know. But it's, uh, it's getting to the same level over here type of thing with the specials oh, yeah, and all that. So great years over here now. So, you You're know. good years. Yeah. What, what have you been up to? You just flew in from where? I just flew in from um, L.A., you know. Oh, just, you went just, from... Okay. Just you're living out in L.A. Now, yeah, right? I live out in L.A. I'm trying to buy a house at the moment. Fucking, I tried to buy a house the other day with Dom DeLuise's kid, and he fucked me over and took a cash deal after he agreed to terms. So, what? Yeah, David DeLuise, you fuck face. What did he do? I had, he... I had the house all planned. You know, you, you wouldn't have gone into fucking foreclosure if you took your dad's advice or something. <laughs> Didn't you get some inheritance coming through about three years ago, you <laughs> fucking dick? <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, you have like a handshake deal? It was, that yeah, shit doesn't yeah. mean nothing yeah, anymore. Yeah, it was all that. like, and then it was in negotiations over a few things, and then oh, I got fucked over, yeah, yeah. Oh, Where man. Where was it? Um, in Hollywood. Damn. Place in Hollywood. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So hey, I'm, I'm going to keep looking. Hey, is that show going to go? Uh, look, man. I, I, you filmed I was, it, right? I, we filmed the pilot. The pilot came out good, and... Um, it was for FX. It was for FX. Did I tell you the story about the fucking trying to cast a disabled person? Yeah. Oh, I did tell no, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. You told that one last time. All right. I don't know. Trying to cast. Is I here? Um, I'm not sure. Physically? 
There was one where, yeah, he was too disabled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway, we got DJ Qualls in the end who was really cool, and, and the show went really well, and we were meant to be hearing out this week if it was going to be made, but um, look, I'm, I you don't know. know. I just wait every fucking day next to the phone and hope they'll call. <laughs> like, it te- yeah. I know it we, tested we, we, well. I know that people liked it, so, I, I, you know, that's all I can do. We gave up waiting by the phone years ago. Oh, uh, yeah. It's better that way, Jim. Yeah. Let it go. <laughs> Leave your house. Just uh, they'll get yeah. a hold of you. No, <laughs> well, I've, got, I've got a mobile. I don't know how old you guys are that you actually think that I'm sitting in a house yeah, sitting to by the phone. But yeah, you the said big black bell <laughs> telephone. But, but you said waiting by the phone. That I is, know, there's I'm, only one image of that. It's by me. It's in the house. It's figuratively speaking, yeah, that's why fucking it, like kids today are fucked with mobile phone in the sense that my nephew's 13 and I saw him text a girl the other day to ask her out. Oh, fucking too easy. To How easy at. is that? Back in my day, you had to you had to call. You had to go uh-huh. through the parents, and the mother would answer, oh, and fuck. then and give go, it to the father, and go, "Who are you? Who are you? Why are you calling?" And then like act like, "Who's calling past nine p.m.?" You know that yes. one? Yes. And you had to put on like a fucking. You had to act, motherfucker. You had to have yeah. a you fake had to voice put on and everything. An act where it was like, "Yeah, <laughs> oh, of course, yes." Yeah. Now you just fucking text, and it was in the hallway. And your parents could hear as well. Yeah. And now it's like... Yeah, you couldn't even take the phone into your room. Yeah, you you had to stand there and ask out and go... In our house, it was the kitchen. Hey, Jenny, it's it's Jim. We have maths Uh, class together. and just. I remember it was a big deal when we finally got a second phone. So then you had options. But for most of my childhood, it was in the Uh, kitchen. So you were were trying to talk to girls and stuff. And mom's fucking washing out your underwear or cooking a meal or something. Now they see cock pics and shit before fucking, you know, these chicks are seeing yeah, dick pictures before fucking uh, they even meet the, the person. I was in a picture of my dick at a drop of a hat. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care anymore. Oh, you just send that right out, right? You send it. Yeah. Is that your Why hello? Not? That's your hello now. No, that I, I, like, I, That's you know. your hello. It's like, hey, make this your wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> make this your fucking... <laughs> On your phone, please. And by the way, would you like to get a burger? Yeah, yeah. Hey, maybe we, maybe we, you've seen my cock. Maybe we could go out and have a bite. Yeah, maybe we yeah. could get a burger and Let's a malt. Go to the milk bar. And a yeah. <laughs> maybe a milkshake and a burger. What happened to milk bars? Uh, that was a good name. Oh, that, that's that was an Australian an English, term. Or, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. What, that, that what is like, the milk bar again? The milk bar is just like it's a fucking diner where you have a milkshake. No, yeah, they call, they call a, it a milk bar. A milk bar, yeah, because yeah, it doesn't serve yeah. alcohol. Uh, yeah, it's like fucking. Where are you at with the alcohol? Uh, I'm on and off, you know, but I'm medically I'm good. But medically, they wanted you to stop for a <laughs> they while. They stopped, yeah. No, I've gotten the all clear for all that. But I, I, Why did a doctor give you the all clear? All clear. No, no, knowing said, that he, you're going to go right back to it. He said, I, was, I haven't drunk for a few weeks. Does that count? You know, but I don't. Actually, no, that's a lie. I drank two days ago because it was my birthday. But apart Happy from birthday. that, I haven't. Yeah. Give me birthdays on Valentine's Day. You just find it boring not drinking, right? I hate it. Yeah, I find it really boring. Yeah. Uh, I... I don't know what it is. You just need some kind of thing to do in a social atmosphere. Yeah. Smoking was good. That was like a thing. And well, drinking you, is fucking you great. You find out that you dislike your friends. And you don't want to dislike your friends. Oh, man. You're so fucking right. Yeah. You're like, I don't like this guy unless we're both drunk. If we're both drunk, he's the best guy ever. Yep. But if I'm sober and he's drunk, he's a fucking cock. <laughs> I, I've been he's in been situations. He's been my friend for years. I can't let him down. Been in situations like that where, where you know, your friends are all getting hammered. Yeah. You're, for some reason, not drinking. And then I'm like, fuck, this sucks. Like, they're loud and, and like, you're obnoxious. And then you start drinking a little bit and you realize, oh, they're cool. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> yeah, well, there's something, something changed. There was a weird thing with me with drinking, though, where... Like, I used to drink after every gig and during every gig for years and years and years. And I used to wake up with that sort of like I was a rock star feeling. Like, ah, yeah. oh, you're outrageous. <laughs> you stood up on the bar and got your cock out. You're awesome. <laughs> right? And now I wake up with, you're a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a gun on the bedside table, you should put it in your mouth <laughs> right now, William. Why the change? I don't know. There was it like a, there was a day where it just stopped, where I stopped enjoying it like right. that. Yeah, it was depressing. Hey, what's up with this Adele? I say that because she was on the screen. You know anything about Adele from uh... the fat chick from Britain? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the... yeah. She sings good. She had nodules, and now she's singing again. Yeah, yeah. It didn't. But, but she's 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 dead working class. Like, yeah. I, I, oh, I, I she like sounds. Her. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. when she talks, you could hear all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She grew up above a fucking pound store. 
Oh, like a, like a 99 great. cent store. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You don't get much more ghetto than that. <laughs> well, that's kind of cool. Like, you, you could have gotten, like, cutlery and stuff for dead cheap, you know, but... <laughs> <laughs> you ever meet her? No, I've never met her, but I, I think she got famous in the last few years since I've been over here. A couple of years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's... Uh, She's all right. There's certain times you see a photo of her head where you're like, oh, who's that girl? And then you just look closer and you go, ah, oh, it's Fatty, oh, Fatty McFadison. <laughs> yeah. We call that uh, iceberg. She sings, iceberg. She sings oh. all these songs about fucking breakups. And you think, I know. Just wait, stop what are, what are it. What are you talking about? She's empowering fat chicks, too. Yeah. It's like, oh, I don't have to. You know, Adele, you listen to the words of her song. It's like she's been screwed over, too, and she's... she's like powerful. And she's just upset that they took the McRib away. Oh, yeah, but she's God. she's oh, tricking everyone. Face. She's got the sexy name Adele, and she sounds like that black uh, sexy singer. Yeah, and none of, you oh. know. And then you you get a picture. Which, of her, which one's like, the black sexy singer? She sounded like that before I saw what she uh, looked like. I was convinced this was a black girl oh, and a sexy one of them. Yeah, oh, of course. Wait, you, you can tell sexiness through a voice. Yeah. Well, that's the whole premise of the TV show, The Voice. You can't tell until your chair spins around. Didn't you stay on after the Super Bowl? That's what I'm talking about. So that would would have been my image before I fucking pushed my button to turn my chair around. I would have thought black, sexy singer. It was she my, looks like an over pig. She looks like an overinflated Twiggy. You know, remember oh, wow, Twiggy from the old yeah, days? Yeah, She's yeah, like... Yeah. Stumpy. <laughs> Twiggy <Twitty. Twitty laughs> was known for anorexia, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but were... she's got like that same kind of face if it was slimmed down. But uh... <laughs> I loved how I loved her acceptance uh, speech just because she sounded completely like you said, like oh, a work, working class girl. But same as same oh, yeah. as uh, Victoria Beckham. They called her Posh Spice, but she's fucking working class scum if ever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? I'm nothing all for posh. that. I have nothing wrong with it. There's nothing posh about it. She can walk posh and she can look oh. posh, but she can't talk to posh. I, she ain't I, posh. Oh, I thought you grew up like thoroughbred. No, the whole time. no, no, no. She's, Down and dirty, huh? Yeah, she's proper, proper scum. Oh, shit. Yeah. Did you watch proper the Grammys? Scum. Does that... You watched, what? Did you watch the Grammys? I, 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 I watched the first bit and lost track after they did a prayer for Whitney Houston. Yeah, that was a little weird, right? Yeah, if I get nothing like a crack, ba crack angel in heaven. <laughs> you, you know, we didn't talk about this much on the show, but it turns out that Clive uh, Davis party. I have to think Clive Davis, Clive Owen. Clive Owen, Clive Davis. You know, Davis. the pre-Grammy party? Yeah. They, they still held it, and people are really fucking pissed off because Whitney's body was still upstairs dead in the room. That's good. And, yeah, and the I guests, know that because I was were, watching on the news because they were waiting to... The guests were bumping into detectives and the coroner's they office. They should have done a weekend at Whitney's. Just bring her down, fucking dead. Why not? When they, when, they first, when they first said that Whitney was dead, I was like, fucking thank God, I'm sick of that sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people said that. <laughs> Damn, that's an angle I uh, didn't think of. Very good. Whitney. But, but to, you know, and that, and then stupid Nancy Grace is trying to, like, hint that she might have been murdered, but now she's getting shot. She's not fucking murdered. Of course not. Whitney Houston For what? killed Whitney Houston. For what? Yeah. Know what Nancy Grace said last night? I asked Ant before the show if he's ever seen this show. It, Nancy Grace is on uh, Headline News. It is the worst hour of TV. Holy Nancy fuck. Grace. It's horrendous. Have you never watched it? Is. it? It's, it's oh, amazing. I watched it during the whole Casey Anthony thing. But I, yeah, yeah. I, I love no, the Casey Anthony thing. Yeah. I, I've seen clips uh, here and there, but I watched the entire hour, and she's got maybe five minutes of material that she just tries to spread out for so an hour. Over and over and over. And then she has people ring in and just want to go, first of all, I just want to tell you, Nancy, how lucky your kids are to have you. Oh, you know, they do that. Like, they're complimenting her as a mom. Right. Like, you please tell the, uh, me the, their names? I have no clue. I'm here all the time. <laughs> well, this is what she uh, said yesterday. Uh, hanging out with David Arquette and making yeah. out. It, so, it came out. It came out that she was, you know, drinking her face off before, what, 10 a.m. at the Beverly Hills Hotel. She was around the pool. She was pissed off because they started watering down her drinks. She is this still drunk. Nancy Grace we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But this is what Nancy Grace says. It turns out there was an eyewitness that saw Whitney uh, doing laps in the pool. And Nancy Grace goes, if you're drinking, that's impossible. Not well, impossible. Of course, oh, of course it's not impossible. It's not, it's not like swimming 30 minutes after you have a meal. Right. Now, that's impossible. But, <laughs> but she's just... She's looking for any little tidbit yep. and trying to stretch it into something. It's not impossible to drink your face off and then go swimming. I, I've been in drunk, most cases. and not only have I been drunk and gone swimming, but I've had to climb a fence to go swimming. 
That's even harder. Yeah, yes. Right. And run away from the people who own the pool. Right. That's a lot of different activities yeah. there. She's fucking delusional. Of course you could do a couple laps if you're shit faced. Of course. Especially in a in a hotel pool, because first of all, what? It's not over your head usually. Nah, yeah. Sometimes a section of it, right? Yeah. But in general, most of it's not over your head. Well, I didn't like the Grammys when they when what's his name, LL Cool J. I was I was I thought he was dead as well. I don't, I don't pay attention. I'm surprised everything. that he was hosting. That. I was surprised, that, and he goes, well, "Let's say a prayer." And it's like, fucking hell, why is God forced into a situation like this? I, and, but but musicians take themselves so seriously that they all did like bow their heads. Like, oh, we've lost a family member here. And they're like, too fucking right. Let's all bow our heads. When a comedian dies, we don't all gather around and hug each other and say a prayer. No. We all talk and make and laugh and yeah. jokes about each other. It's not as, it's not in any way more disrespectful in my opinion because it's, it's at least it's real but they're fucking up their own asses musicians they should have they should have done that prayer when she was alive yeah yeah she might have needed the help then <laughs> she doesn't need the help now no ah <laughs> uh, well who's next to die uh well you got well uh, we got i'm thinking robin gibb Robin Gibb. Robin Gibb. He's One pretty fucked. Have you Gibb. seen him lately? Yeah, he's not he looking too good. He doesn't look too fucking good, Robin <laughs> Gibb. No. I reckon if we I check the news right now. now, he might be fucking dead. <laughs> I got to look him up now. He looks a bit... I, I don't think this is a disease he got, but he looks a little bit aidsy. Robin. A little aidsy? <laughs> a little aidsy. <laughs> he's, he's looking at a t touch aidsy. Yeah, he's got, he's, got a, he's got a case of the AIDS. <laughs> well, there's, there's, well, Robin Gibb cancer comes up right away. Yeah, oh, is shit. that what he's got? He's got one of those diseases. Oh, Let me boy. See. Let's you guys are going to get that. complaints. People Let's don't like cancer jokes. That ain't good. No, you got to keep ah! it. Ah! What happened? Ah! It's not looking too good. Holy fuck! <laughs> yeah, oh, he's fucked, Robin. Get Gibb. the fuck out of here! Yeah, if you thought I was uh, overreacting, how is he like alive? Max, and like he's Max still, Headroom. he's still doing gigs. <laughs> he's crazy. rocking it because he's been wearing a wig for That's years. Crazy. He's just this fucking skeleton in the wig, going. Uh, I wow. started a joke. I will tweet this, but I mean, don't wait for me. Uh, Robin Gibb cancer in Google. Do it now. Holy fuck! How is he even breathing? Yeah, I don't dude, know. he's got to weigh a hundred pounds. Oh, yeah, probably less. He's a fucking... He looks like he's come out of Auschwitz. Jesus, yeah. Holy fuck, this is not right. Poor Robin. Well, and, you, you know, well, you really went out then, on a limb there, then huh, Jim Jeffries? <laughs> then there's going to be Barry. Barry Gibbs is going to be left all by himself now that Maurice is dead. Yeah, yeah. And he's just going to be singing the three-part harmonies all, uh, by, all by himself. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's the eldest one as well. Hey. All all of his brothers will be dead then, isn't there? Because it yeah. was the other brother that died. And the eldest one, he keeps on rocking it out. Uh, poor Barry. Uh, I feel sorry for him. Wow, you're you're uh, you're on to something here. Holy <laughs> fuck. <laughs> All right, I tweeted OP Radio. All right, so how, how, long, how long do you have? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a bet there. How long do you give him? Weeks? Months? Days? Well, that's, 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 that's weeks, that's maybe. Weeks? I'll, that's hours. I'll give you five to one in the last two months. <laughs> that's pretty good odds. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, he really doesn't look good. No. How do, how do you spell your name these days? That's bad. J e f f e r i e s. J and Jim's always spelled the same. E f f e r i e s. E r i e s. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Wow. That, that looks bad. Yeah, because we lost <laughs> Gary Carter. I don't, you're not. Are you a baseball fan? I, no, but I heard Bobo uh, getting upset. And was he, he was great. He was memorized. I, I was laughing because you guys were like going. How do you remember things from when you were four? That's because that's when his brain stopped developing. <laughs> that was the last of it. That was like everything just stopped in time right then. That's the only things he remembers yeah. from when he's four. <laughs> I feel sorry for Bobo. I, I said once flippantly that I'd pay for him to get a prostitute, and he came along to a gig, and he pulled me up on it. Like, when are we doing this? Oh, really? Like, yeah. So you should have done it. I'll give him the money, but he think, seems to think that I'll I'll help with the whole situation. I can't fucking facilitate as well. Did we get him a hand job yet? Uh, no. We tend to get people no. hand jobs around here. No. Well, that's pleasant. Well, or D.L. Hughley got one of our guys a, 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 um, a happy ending massage. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's done that. I've, done, I've, I've had a lot of them in me day, actually. Really? Yeah, rub and tugs in Australia. They're quite popular. And it's not its not exclusively the Asian folk who gives them. It's like regular people as well. Give them. Like, not saying the Asians aren't regular people, mm. but we know they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, 
<laughs> if it was like university students and stuff, it, there's a lot less guilt than a hooker with a rub and tug. Yeah. Because it's just like, you, you seem to do it in your brain. Oh, I'm just getting a massage. Nothing wrong with a massage. And, a massive, oh, this, mass a massage. <laughs> this, this young lady, she seems to need the money, so I'm helping her out. And she doesn't seem to be a good, very, very good masseuse, so she has to... Just Work what she can. She has to have a talent somewhere. <laughs> you ever been to the rub and tug parlor that has a hole in the massage table? Oh, man. So, you, like, so you, like a hole, like, sort of, yay yeah, big, like, the size of a plate. Yeah. Right? You put so your that, dick through it? Yeah, so when you're laying down, so when you get your erection, your dick's sort of free-flowing, and the girl might reach under the table and give you a bit of a whack before you <laughs> have to roll over. Fuck? That's That's convenient. Australia's a go-ahead country, mate. We it think about is. things like this. Bunch of goers. Yeah, we do, we doers, mate. Do you guys believe in God there? Australia's got a very low religious... Very amount, low, huh? Very low, yeah. We're, 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 we're What's Brit that based on? I, you know, we're not stupid, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, don't, I can't tell you the exact answer. But we don't have... Like, you didn't grow up uh, religious? No, and I there was very few religious people I knew. And they were looked at as probably uh, weird. They were looked at, yeah. The Christians, the Christian kids at school. There's like a group of ten of them that all used to sit together that we used to mock at the and, lunch table. And, yeah, yeah, and, and talk about. Yeah, and they're still pretty heavily religious. We didn't have like over here where it's like a whole area of Sydney that is a religious area or something. And, and it, we didn't have like uh, there's no Jewish Australians. There's some Jews living in Australia, but there's no. I don't know that. There's no like Australian like that's like oh yeah fucking. Shalom, mate. There's no that guy, right? <laughs> we, we got a lot of South African Jews that come out, which is always weird when I meet like an anti-Semitic uh, Australian, where it's like, you hate him and you've never met one? Or like, they? Yeah. Can't believe he took me penny. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never pay that much for a didgeridoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think, it's mostly Catholic and Christians and stuff like that. There's not there's not a whole heap of muzzies or anything like that. There's Muz a lot of, a lot of <laughs> I wish we used that here in the States. It's so wrong here. But why like, is that it's wrong? It's so wrong here. Why? It's just abbreviation. Muzzies. Why is that wrong? Because uh, it sounds like you're, uh, you know, it sounds like a, a slur. Uh, yeah, it's just, that's because it is. It's wrong everywhere. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, but you know what? You guys use it more than we do. Well, there's a lot of muzzies in uh, Britain. Yeah, 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 they're packed with them. Yeah. A little bit of a, a problem. Is what I yeah, hear. they're having a big burqa issue at the moment about uh, issue. about you have to take your burqa off if you go into the bank. But like the religious people are saying, no, you don't have to do it. But if you have to take a motorcycle, it look like a robbery. If you do take a motorcycle helmet off, you have to take your burqa off. But you don't even have to take your bur your burqa off if you're going through airport security. If you, oh. which you got to think that's a fucking suicide bomb waiting to happen oh, the, the burger hell yeah come on like i yeah. i would burk her up if i was a suicide bomber yeah they're not gonna check you no fuck hmm. they get so, away with fucking literally murder <laughs> 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 yeah, it was just, as i was saying that i'm like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't really get away they die as yeah, well Yeah, that's true <laughs> all right they don't get away with shit it's a draw <laughs> yeah, it's a draw <laughs> not getting away with it but um, but they're taking the piss yeah Dude, you got a clutter cleaner T-shirt? Yeah. What the fuck? How fucking cool is Where'd that? Where did you get that? Uh, I got. And they were in here. Yeah. Is that like the people off hoarders? Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They're the I, ones that my clean. mother's. My mother's a hoarder. A real life hoarder. A real life. Like, Why haven't you I ever watch, told us this? I watch fuck. that show and it fucking terrifies me. Really? What is her thing? My, well, see, my mother, she always likes kids' toys. Like, she goes to garage sales and thinks that she's got things for the grandkids. And now it's eBay and things come into the house. But like when I was. I was born because my mother had two sons, and then she, she she had one more last go at having a girl, right? And when I came out, she wouldn't hold me for the first few hours or something because I was a boy, and then wouldn't Whoa. wouldn't unwrap the blanket for a couple of weeks because she didn't want to see the penis, right? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> wow. Yeah. All so right. I that's that's the mental scarring issues, right. right there, right? Oof. She was so disappointed in me being a, a boy. So then after that, she decided that she was going to collect dolls. Like, she was going to fill that void, right? There's oh, literally no. thousands of dolls in the house that I grew up, and they're they coming over you. They're, like, watching you. Like There was one that used to stare at me while I watched TV. Oh. <laughs> that I, I used to, when I came home, I'd put a towel over its head. Like, <laughs> like it was going to be a suicide bomber or something. So I, I, So the whole house was just full of dolls. And then, like, my parents had a caravan in the backyard, and then that got filled up with shit. And uh. now my mum goes on, and she gets hobbies and stuff, and she starts filling all that. <laughs> Yeah, just like that, right? So 
Seinfeld episode. But like, the like, like where there's no surface in the house that's you could put something on. Everything. Wow, it's totally packed. Up. Now after oh. there was there was a it was a four bedroom house. So after me and my brothers moved out, as soon as a room was Fuck. moved out of that room was filled with shit. Just really? like yeah, it would only take a couple of weeks or something. So you couldn't just come back and. No. Go into your old room. No, 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 all the rooms are filled with crap. She's, yeah, and now she's just not mobile enough to fucking get rid of any of it. Yeah. And she lies about how much she gets rid of. She's like, she's like, oh, no, no, I've got rid of a lot of it. No, you haven't. That's what those hoarders do. Oh, man. yeah, wow, she's fucking... fucking Everything so you watch something. that show. You watch that show and you're like, oh, fuck, man. Sometimes it makes me really upset and sometimes oh, I'm no. like, ah, ah, that's what <laughs> happened. <laughs> ah. Look at this one. And sometimes I'm like, at least my mum didn't have cat shit everywhere. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> bags. What, what type of parent are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there are the, the hoarders that just have the uh, clutter, yeah. a lot of stuff. And then there's the disgusting people that I don't consider hoarders. They're just lazy fucking slobs. Yeah, they're just slobs. Yeah. They're not collecting. Like, I can understand it's like, all right, you're a crazy person. You have a bunch of dolls or you got this yeah. or that or the other thing. My mum wasn't unhygienic. Right. But then when you get the fucking people, they're not collecting garbage. They're not hoarding garbage. They're just lazy fucks yeah, yeah. that don't want to clean up. And it's always like we said, that woman is like, I have fibromyalgia. I have Epstein-Barr syndrome. I have no energy. Have you seen there's a new show? Because there's hoarders, and now another channel has just stolen the hoarding, ideas. Hoarding Buried Alive. Hoarding Buried Alive. And yeah. the only difference between the two shows is Hoarding Buried Alive, they don't clean out your house. <laughs> no, yes, that's true. <laughs> that's and they totally should. different. They, they try to teach them how to clean it out themselves. That is yeah. one guy on, like, the first episode... Whereas, like, he had a girlfriend, and she's like, I love this guy. He's the best guy ever, but he always comes over to my house. And I, they're both, like, 45 years old. And then she's like, I don't care anything that you can show me, honey. I'll be fine. I love you, and we can get over any hurdle. And then she came in, and she's like, this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> like, this guy was, like, climbing over garbage. Like, he had no walkable surface. <laughs> and by the end, of, the end of the episode, she was like, fuck him. I'm not going out with him. He's a fucking maniac. And you know why they don't clean the house? Because they don't have the budget. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, they don't yeah. have the budget, that's all. They don't have the budget. So they make believe but in, that show, it, in that show, they come back and see how they're progressing. Yeah. And that guy's like, oh, you know, the, the, you can open the door now. That's a big leap for me. Yeah. Like, you know, when they see him in the hoarders and they're like going, okay, we're going to have to get rid of stuff. And you're like, there is a mountain of fucking shit. There are seven rooms of shit. And you're going, this baseball, does it mean anything to you? Oh, and the yeah. person's going, <sighs> Debating, and, and you just think it's going to take like, years. Yeah, Are you doing this with every item? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's only two hundred thousand items. <laughs> two hundred thousand items. <laughs> you can't spend five minutes on, on every per- single fucking yeah. little yeah, thing. Yeah, do the math. You're not going to even make you it. Can't. Ten, you and, just have to get a yeah. shovel and just go. We're getting rid of this fucking shit. That's what we say. What and you should yeah. say in that show is go through the house and select two hundred things that you can't do without. You've got five hours to do it. And if you haven't selected it, it's it, fucking it's gone. It's getting thrown away. Right. Mm-hmm. It's gone. Good. That's your only choice. They don't fucking understand also that they're going to lose their house, their kids. And they're like, yeah, this problem. I really need to do this. And then they, they, they start yelling at the people. Yeah. No, you said I could look at things before you throw them away. And then they go into the truck. <laughs> yeah. And they start going through the bags and shit. It's like, no, that's the stuff that was thrown away. I don't, yeah, I I don't think there's away. a better TV show about mental uh, illness. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I love mental illness shows. We really do love watching <laughs> mentally ill people. <laughs> I would like when they do the backstories where they're talking to the lady and the lady's like, I think things got really out of hand when my husband left me. Yeah. And it's like, that's because he did all the cleaning. Yeah, that's, it wasn't the, the, and it's, the and it's mostly, the it's mostly women for some reason. Yes. Mostly women. It's like 10% it's men. Yeah. There was that one guy on just the regular hoarders who they reckon he was hoarding rats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, he had like 10,000, 20,000 rats yeah, in his but house. Yeah, that was, that was, that was bullshit though. I, I, if it was city rats, I would have been impressed. It was the pet store rats. Pet store rats, but he let him. Because they yeah. made a big deal about. It. I'm like, holy fuck, he's got rats in his house, but it's the almost lovable ones. Yeah, but there was millions of them. Well, there's a couple thousand, sure. There was more than a couple of thousand. Can you imagine if it yeah. was the subway rats? Oh, I big like I, fuck. I, I, I don't discriminate. No, a rat's a rat to uh, you. I don't know. <laughs> Is there, I didn't know there were different types, are they? I've never been a big fan of like. Are we allowed to replay our rat show? By the way, you're. Uh, 
Not to interrupt Jeffries, which I did. Um, but it, it needs when to be. When did E-Rock bleach I, the top of his hair? <laughs> oh, God. What the fuck? Every time I see you, it's something weird. What have you done to your hair? <laughs> Hi, Jim. Did you try to distract the weight loss? Or... You, you have no oh, idea. His shit. whole head was bleach blonde for a while. Really? Why? And he let it grow out, but he's... I get... Did you redo the top of your head? No, I was just letting it grow longer so I could cut it out, so... My... My mother... I, okay, to this day, I've always wanted to have a tattoo, but I'm not getting one until my mum's dead. Oh, right? really? I'm Why? still terrified of the fucking woman. Doesn't matter Why? how. I... You don't even live close to her. Because I just think I only have to wait like a few more months tops, right? <laughs> you know, so, so I've, <laughs> I've never, I've never got a tattoo. I've, I've ne- never like. I'm glad about a few things. I never got my ears pierced because I always thought when you know when you're like 13, you're like I'm going to get an earring, and now I'm like I'm glad I don't have an earring. I yeah. wouldn't want a fucking earring. But when I was a kid, I really wanted one. You know. My brother comes home, he's 18, and he had this fucking girlfriend, who he's married to now, actually, but she bleached Blondie's hair. It was, it was the late 80s, it, that's what it was done, like that white type of thing. My mum fucking wigged out so fucking bad that he couldn't admit that it was his girlfriend that did it. And he had a friend who was an apprentice hairdresser, so he said, oh, it was that guy who did it, right? Oh, shit. My mum got in the car to go into the hairdressers and just abuse him. <laughs> Oh, man. So my, my brother had to ring the hairdressers up and just go, my mom's about to come in and just call you a cunt. Just be ready. She sounds like a scary woman. Oh, she's man. a fucking scary woman, man. I tell you, I went back to Australia and I met up with a whole lot of guys that I went to school with. My mother was a school teacher in my school. And it's like, it's like these were like the cool kids that I wasn't in the group with or whatever. And they all came to my show. And I was like, wow, the cool kids have all come. And one of them was like, well, I always thought you were a good guy. You guys, but I couldn't be your friend. Your mum fucking terrified me. Like, it's just that, that whole, my whole life. Wait, she was a teacher at your school? At my school, yeah. yeah. that makes it impossible to bring anyone home to your house. My, mo- I- my mother was my sex education teacher for an entire term at school because my fucking sex ed teacher, ironically, got pregnant and was on maternity leave. <laughs> ironically, yeah. <laughs> And, and she I could figure that out. See, that's the thing, because my mum was a casual teacher, but she was there like four days out of five. Like, she, but you'd never know what class you were going to walk into and go, oh, fuck. So right? there, there were days your mom was teaching you? Oh, all yeah, these classes? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd walk in this class, and like, the, I'd hear my teacher sick, and my mum was like the first person they fucking called. This teacher was away for a whole term, and that entire semester was when we were learning sex education. My mum was in charge of that. And I just didn't show up to it right, the whole the whole semester. <laughs> and so to this day, I've never officially had sex education. Oh wow! Yeah, well, I, you learned yourself, I you guess. Figure it out. Yeah, you, you do figure it out. I think so. <laughs> Better than I they could so. ever teach. <laughs> you keep rubbing it till it spits. <laughs> like, like how long do these things take? <laughs> Trial and error. Uh, I, I only learnt recently. You have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> That sucks. Oh, that was a teacher, though. I remember because oh, I, I went to the first that. class and she did the thing where she pulled the chart down. Yeah. They had that picture, that, that side on picture of the penis. Yeah. Where it's like just that testicle. Sliced? Yeah, sliced. Yeah, so like you could see what's section. inside. Yeah, cross yeah, section, yeah, yeah. section yeah. shot. Yeah, that's horrible. And the fucking the ovaries that look like a cow's head. You know when they sort of show like. A so steer. Little, yeah, like a steer. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's the side oh, of the God. fucking. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, fucking gross, the penis, eh? Side on. Yeah, absolutely. It just looks like it could break really easily. Like that little tube what, that goes to the balls that shoots up around into your abdomen and then shoots back through your cock. That doesn't look like it's a sturdy bit of apparatus. No, it looks very flimsy. The whole thing looks flimsy when you see it this way, I guess. Huh? It needs like mm-hmm. a rib cage around it. Well, how about a little protection for the balls? That would be nice. But it's all, have them just outside your body constantly. But it's all to keep them cold, isn't it? No, I, yeah, I know the reason. you got to keep the temperature right. But, but then you go, maybe all your organs feel that painful if they were punched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just that our testicles are the only ones who have had punched. Yeah. Like if, I would, if you didn't have, like, a rib cage and your heart was just, like, in a sack hanging off, like, a, like <laughs> hanging in a tit off your body, and someone goes, some cunt just punched me in the heart, that's fucking horrible. <laughs> I, I think you're right. Why do we always just assume it's just the balls? <laughs> yeah. I, I bet all... you if you punched your lung, it wouldn't be fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, be he's fun. right. If there was just a thin layer of skin protecting Everything, anything. Everything, yeah. Oh, my liver. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, oh well. the liver would hurt. Well, that gets a little... You, can feel, up you anyway. can feel the liver sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, oh. But imagine that, yeah, every organ just barely with some scrotum skin around just it. Just hanging with scrotum punched. skin. 
punched in the fucking kidney. You just have a kidney <laughs> just hanging off the side of your arm <laughs> in a scrotum. <laughs> you fucking... That would hurt. You're right. <laughs> Fuck. Dr. Jeffries. It's just a theory. I don't know for sure. I'm sure there's a doctor that can ring up and go, no, we've actually tasted this. Mm -hmm. You can punch a heart all Dr. day. Mengele. And it won't bother you in the slightest. <laughs> Hey, where you you're, you're at that lovely place, huh? I've never been there. I heard it's quite nice. I was there for uh, Jim Brewer. It's a great room, man. You're gonna you're gonna have a good time up there. How many shows are you doing? Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think we're doing two on Friday, two on Saturday. And one then, Sunday. One, one Sunday, yeah. It's Levity Live. It's uh, once again, Danny. It's the Palisades, fucking uh, inside. The, inside the Palisades Center. Center, and that's West Nyack, New York. Eight four five three five three fifty four hundred for tickets. Yeah, they do a good job up there. You know what? And the food's really good. Can I do a very vague uh, plug for something else? Um, sure. I. Um, was in Washington last week, and the tickets sold out like a month and a half in advance. So uh, my agents have booked me in to do a theatre in Washington in April. And I don't know what the name of the theatre is. And I don't know what day in April. But for the people in Washington who missed out, <laughs> they'll figure it out. Google it, fuckfaces. Like you know what I mean? Like I can't be more exact than that. I've set you on the trail. How about you get the info and you tweet it? Jim Jeffries on uh, Twitter with the two Fs, right? Yeah, I don't know if I'll be doing that. Nah. Twitter's like I find Twitter to be very painful. I still do it, but. Yeah, I don't know what the end game is. Yeah. I don't know what, the, what we're supposed to be doing. And whenever I plug a gig, because I feel that's what I'm meant to be doing, you're trying to sell tickets for people to come and see me, or, or letting my fans know that I'm coming to a town near them. Yeah. And then you say, oh, I'm going to... I said, like, yesterday I went, oh, I'm going to be on Opie and Anthony in the morning, and then people go... Fuck you! You never write jokes on this. <laughs> and <it's> like, what? <laughs> like, well, listen to the Opie and Anthony. I might say something funny. Something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. I just made a great observation about your yeah. organs being in scrotums. And, yeah, you're, you're turning a lot of people on to the fact you're going to be telling jokes on our show. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like so I find I find him I find him very uh, fucking cockish. The the uh, the Twitter. I, I hope it all develops into something that makes sense because it's just bizarre. I like it the way it is. Just For stupid. Now, There's just, no real. Just fucking... keep it dumb. There's I, no perp real purpose for it. I do enjoy finding out um, that a celebrity is dead through the medium of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like, what it's boiled down like, to now, though. Like, you right. remember in the old days, you used to watch it on the news. It was yeah. all serious. And now it's just some horrible joke yep. about someone being dead. And you're like, it's excellent. Like, oh, everybody or, fights to get the first joke or, out. Or just like something about Japanese people swimming. And you're like, there must have been a big tsunami. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm glad oh, I found okay. out that way. That really cushioned the blow for me. Yeah, you almost have, have to me. put the puzzle together, what it is. You read some tweets and go, all right, did this person die? Are they injured? Is mm -hmm. What happened here? And the, the thing is, I get all my jokey tweet, um, <laughs> tweets off just, like, comedians and stuff like that. I get all my serious tweets off porn stars. Porn stars have the most serious tweets ever. Yeah, They're they always do. like, Whitney's dead, God rest your soul, such a great artist, X, 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 X. Yeah. Who the fuck, uh, what's her name that was uh, with Charlie Sheen? Brie? Yeah, Brie. yeah. Brie Olsen. She tweeted something last night that was like, uh, yeah, I do porn, and I earn money, and I pay my taxes. And it's like, oh, she was, she was going to... off on, oh, I pay my taxes. Is I'm she, a taxpayer. Is she back doing porn, is she? I guess I, so. I was a big fan of oh, her. Oh, is she? I don't know. She I'm, gl I'm like glad that. she's back. I was worried about her being gone for yeah. too long. I True. like her. She took True. a cock up her ass like a trooper. Oh. Like, oh. <laughs> didn't she? It's like it didn't even touch the sides for her. She was straight <laughs> on it. And I, I, I'm not a pedophile. I want to stipulate that. But she has that voice like she's a child. I don't know <laughs> why I dig that. <laughs> yeah, she talked about that on our show. Did she, she? She doesn't mind acting a little younger. A little younger? She doesn't mind. A little, she's still in the womb. That, that's how fucking young that she girl can act. All right, why don't we take a break? So you got Levity Live this weekend in uh, West Nyack. It's a great club. And like I said, I, I said the food's great because most of the comedy clubs, their food is uh, hurting. Yeah, know? no, it's not. It, but see, the thing is, I was living in Britain for 10 years. That's like fine dining any comedy club for me. So I'm, I'm all right with it. Yeah. And I think what Jim was, was trying to plug before oh, good. was that uh, on April 20th, he'll be performing at the State Theater. And you can get your tickets. They are on sale today. Nice. Today at noon. Yeah. You can get your tickets for that show. It's a huge, uh, that's a huge gig. State Theater. So April twentieth, folks, is, get your tickets. Is that where? Is oh, that well, not now. Is that, that where Lincoln died? Is that the same? <laughs> Ford Theater. Wanna, I wanna, <laughs> is that theater still that's open? Ford's oh theater. yeah, it is. You yeah, never yeah. Seen it? No. And they'll take you across the street and show you the bed he died in. Oh, excellent. And the bed's still there. But obviously. he didn't. I thought he got shot in the fucking head. He yeah, did. but uh, they, and, he, they, and then he died in bed later on. They yeah. Took him across the street. How, how thick was his beard? <laughs> <laughs> he got shot behind the ear, and it lodged behind. 
behind his eyeball. I went years ago, but I think you could still see the blood and everything I really, on the pillow. Yeah, they I got really the bloody enjoyed pillow. Washington for wandering around and looking at shit. I love shit. checking all that shit out. I like going to the museum. There's like that one museum, like the Natural History one, where in the end, it's like there's all these really good stuff. But then the only bit I want to see was like Archie Bunker's chair. Right, that's what and everybody Fonzie's does. Jacket. That museum sucks. It's one step up from being a hard rock or a Planet Hollywood. Yes. Uh, what are you, yeah. Uh, the uh, the uh, Smith yeah. Smithsonian. That is, is the, the space, biggest letdown. The Air and like, Space one is fucking awesome. I like that. Me, yeah. and, me and Ann ended up going there before we signed with XM. Love the Air and Space. That was so see, this is what I was thinking because we were talking about UFOs and all that type of stuff. I'm a big believer that, like, I, so I saw the Wright Brothers plane. Right, mm -hmm. the other day, like last week. And that's like 110 years ago or something. Yeah. And now we're just like a fucking stealth bomber. <laughs> like in 110 years, we've got fucking Batman's plane. Now. That's crazy. It, now give us another 200 years. Think of the fucking we shit we'll have. Well, as long as we maybe get the space program back. But even World War, <laughs> even World War One, where they've got like, uh, they've got the Red Baron planes. Yeah. That was like 10 years after the Wright brothers. They were already going, oh yeah, we'll just fucking attach things to I, this. I always thought how fucked up the Wright brothers would uh, think uh, if they if they flew in a, a jet, in a passenger jet right now. Yeah. Like you, where you're walking around. They had to lay down and it's like a, they were on a sled. Like when you go on a sled down a fucking hill, were, that's how they were laying down. They made, yeah. and, and then they'd fly and, and look down like, ah, yeah. and, and they just go a few yards. You know what's great about it? Like wearing a suit <laughs> they, as well. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> like it was still oh, like, 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 I'm doing the most dangerous thing that man has ever done, but one must look proper. He's got yeah. his bow tie on. He's got a bow tie on. He's got like a hat like he's been playing with a train set. They couldn't figure out sweatpants back then. Yeah, yeah. That Why not? Was, how, how did how they invent the be? plane before sweatpants? Right. Oh god. They, they really just invented a big kite, or even just shorts. Sure, anything. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, like no one back then could figure out that if you're going to go to the beach, maybe you cut some of the clothes off a yeah, little yeah, bit to yeah, keep yeah. yourself cool. And why always with stripes when you went to the why? beach? Why did it? Why did everyone why? have to look like that? I don't know. I, I I'm amazed. I understand you got to. You gotta grow as a as a society, but you you would think that some of this stuff was no brainer shit. But there's even a lot of then. there's a lot of inventions in this world that you think to yourself, how fucking long did it take us to do this? That's what I'm saying. We can yeah, put them yeah. out of me. Like putting wheels on a suitcase. When I was a kid, that that really it came in when I was about ten. Right. Everyone was just carrying fucking suitcases, and no one could like see that. Right. With like fucking handles <laughs> right. filled with all their worldly possessions, just walking along with their backs breaking. <laughs> right. Till like one cunt went, put two little wheels in the bottom. <laughs> You're so. It right. took for fucking ever. How long? How many years do you think it should have uh, been? Jim. That At should have been like the. The, the year they invented suitcases should have been the same year they invented putting little wheels on them. The next year, after here's suitcases, yeah. year two, here's suitcases with wheels. Here's You're suitcases right. with wheels. Like, I'll give them the first year. Instead of going sack, yeah. suitcase, suitcase wheels. How many yeah. years did it actually take, you think? 40? I reckon they came in in like the late 80s. Like, oh, I don't remember. But suitcases have been around since the fuck 1800s. Since the fucking dawn of time. Suitcases. Yeah. Since no, people had shit. No one can figure out two little wheels. <laughs> and like, how long were you at the fucking post office? How long were the post office selling yeah. stickers like for the kids to put on their books and stuff? Yeah. And that dumb old cunt was still using a sponge for a stamp. Just going, oh, yeah, there's, there can't be a better way to put these stamps on. Here, have some free stickers. <laughs> and, and, and now it's like stamps Wait, coming do you remember little... this? Did they really have stickers at no, the post we've, we've had, I don't well, remember. We've had stickers since we were little kids. Sure. You put yeah, on yeah. skateboards oh, saying, and stuff right. like but that. for some reason, Is stamps, you were licking them forever for, until they realized they could just make them sticky on the back. Until like, they make them, yeah, they go, like we a have sticker. stickers. But no one made the connection. No one made the connection because, well, this is the way the stamps have always been. <laughs> There's probably some cunt that went, no, no, that won't be as collectible. Fuck you, you nerd. I don't want to have uh. that stuff on my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> but the little the little sponge, just like a retard. Just I've got this little sponge that I keep slightly moist, so it's at the right level, so I can put it onto the thing. It's got to be a few more uh, examples. I'd like to find it. Can you find me out what, when they started putting wheels in suitcases? It's got to be a bizarre like. I don't think it's more than ten years old. Well, no, at this it's, point, it's at, least, it is. it's at least twenty years. But 20 I years remember maybe? being a kid thinking, "Oh, that lady's fancy. Look at her. That's that's no strain on her back." <laughs>
That's really funny, brother. Oh God. All right, we, we'll break and we'll uh, we'll continue down this road. I, I want to think of a few more. They were first introduced in 1970. Were they yeah, but no one saw them in 1970. Nah. They no, were but still... that was only for the elite. <laughs> <laughs> Wheels for commoners? Never. But even in 1970, nah. they had suitcases like yeah. in the 1800s and shit. Same no one, thing. No How one, people were carrying their shit. No one had wheels on their suitcases well into the 80s. Easy. Yeah. You know what's also fucked up? The first ones they made, the wheels were on the skinny side. Yeah. So it was constantly tipping over. And they didn't have the handle that pulled out. You're no. just sort of dragging it off a little bit of cloth that dangled, <laughs> that dangled off the end of your bag. Yeah. 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 Then they yeah. realized if we turn it sideways, make it a little taller and slimmer. Yeah. You had to bend the... down toward the, toward the fucking ground. Uh, yeah. Even suitcase, suitcase. suitcases weren't even deep. They were the same level high as they were deep. The zipper used to go right through the middle of the fucking thing. Like, you didn't even zip it at the top. No. Like, it would go through the middle and there'd be a handle on each side. Yeah. So, like, how people packed them, I'll never know. To, you to packed each half and yeah. then had to slap it together And real then you quick. hope that it slapped together. You, yeah. go, you had to get someone to sit on top of it because you had to work the sides around. Uh, Our ancestors were stupid. Fucking stupid as it's shit. Dumb. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious! Why it takes so long to invent the bike? We can keep going with this. Oh, the penny farthing. The what? The penny farthing, like when they had that big wheel with the little wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's they retarded. Why couldn't they figure out <laughs> yeah. two wheels the same, same size? size? Why don't yeah. we just make this they, wheel bigger, they, that wheel smaller? Right. And they we're already set. had the chain. The chain was already working out on the first automobiles with fucking. Right. So the chain was invented. It wasn't the invention of the chain. But you had to climb. Look, look at this asshole. You had to climb up onto your bike. And you know that. And the, look, you just look at it, and a logical person will go, "Well, why?" But don't I did. You make the wheel I, I did love the braking system. You just pedal backwards yeah what if you're going downhill <laughs> good luck yeah and they couldn't figure out the break good luck you getting on it was good though yeah that what? had that had to be i'd like to ride one once it would be terrifying it would be terrifying oh, yeah man where do, where could you ride an old school bike like that I think you'd have to sign some type of waiver. You think? Yeah. <laughs> sign some type of waiver for a big wheel bicycle. <laughs> I never saw You're that right. piece of paperwork. Like, it'd be safer to bungee jump than to ride one of those things. Because <laughs> just to stack it would just be... Because, like, even when they, they did it on, on Jackass, didn't they? They rode penny farthings and yeah. went after each other. I didn't even know the name of those things until just now. A penny farthing. Yeah. No, I never heard that. <laughs> I don't know why it's called the penny farthing. It's probably farthing. that's how much it cost. Yes, one penny and one farthing. And one farthing. <laughs> oh, here's another one that's coming in. Uh, how are you? We couldn't figure out how to shit indoors for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to have toilets outside, but in really a... far away. Yeah, yeah, because you didn't you want, want the... the stink coming into your house. Yeah, yeah. No, that was retarded. But you know what? We're going to look back on a lot of things, like I reckon in 50 years where we just go. Because I, I even remember th holding a CD going, they'll never improve on this. Yeah. Because I had LPs yeah. going, look at this fucking thing. <laughs> they'll never improve on this. It's like you watch Back to the Future 2 and we still haven't like, we've got like two years left to live up to that potential because it was mm -hmm. 2015. But there's things that they didn't pick. Like, he never rocked around with an iPad. Like, like yeah, as, yeah. as much as they thought they could blow our minds, the, the biggest thing they could think of was a holographic shark and shoelaces that did themselves up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they, th they thought, yes. this will fucking blow their minds. <laughs> you you got to stop with, uh, they'll never improve on this, finally, you know? We all <laughs> thought that, though, but it, it, you can't think that way. Well, how can, how, okay, give, make a prediction. How can they improve on the iPod? The iPod? What do you... Yeah, like how We've can they kind of moved on from that? Just no, but like having it in your phone. Or well, now it's right, in right. your phone as a one, as, yeah. as a you know. It's well, think back what they called smartphones just years ago. It was like what you could get texts on it. You could maybe see some news on a web browser type thing. And now it's you know it's pretty much a computer in your hand. It's, okay. like, it's, like when the, it's like when the internet first came out and people didn't know what to fucking do with it. Didn't thing. even know what to do with it. And it was it's just like, like, like porn. It was just like you look at even before porn, yeah. like the real early stage was just like some bloke had written about sharks. And, <laughs> and, 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 and you know, just like, thought it was cool you could just see that like, from your I house. Could just see it my house. And you, you'd have that mate who had it and you yeah. didn't know how he had it and he had to wind it up for fucking days and there was a <laughs> noise and then you went, hey look Shocks. I think uh, <laughs> to answer your question, they'll probably start wiring our brains. 
kind of yeah. just throwing it all right yeah. in your fucking brains. Maybe, but it seems like the, the maybe three, some kind of weird hearing aid thing that you just have everything. The right 3D there. TV, I sort of wanted one, and now I don't give a fuck. It's been a bust. <laughs> yeah, it's a bust so far. Yeah, yeah, on the outside, it sounds like oh, that's pretty cool. That ah, fuck it. Nobody wants to sit there and lay on their couch with with you know a, a glasses that weigh a pound. They're they have heavy, to replace right? batteries every yeah. three weeks. and uncomfortable. They made the Premier League in Britain. They made it all 3D. So that when you went into the pub, it was just fucking, everyone was like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. So the big screen 3D TVs all through the pub, and, it, and Guinness would have give you fucking glasses that said Guinness on the side, which is all well and good if you're in the pub just focusing on the game. But if at any moment you try to pick up your drink and pour it to your head <laughs> or, or talk to the person next to you, everyone's just bumping into each other. And it's just the blurry it's just, Yeah, it's just fucking all these drunk people with fucking tinted glasses on, not being able to... And you take them off, then you can't watch the game. You're in this fucking dilemma yeah, in yeah. between. Do I, I, do I like my friends or do I like football? I finally had to go back to glasses for uh, driving. Right. Or watching TV, but as soon as I look down, it's the same fucking shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's a, a blurry mess. I'm like, this isn't <laughs> helping me. I need something where I can see fine no matter what I'm doing with my eyes. By the way, going back to the luggage, yeah. uh, it should be mentioned that you forgot about the luggage rack. What do you mean? It was the metal rack where you put your luggage oh, yeah, on. People used to, and, and, and people, people and used they to have it. And they couldn't even figure out, okay, maybe we should combine these two. Yeah, people used to have the little metal have rack. The, wheels. the metal rack. That they used to take with them to put the bag on top of You forgot about that. <laughs> so you had to pack that, that so you could wheel your luggage. But there, there, there wasn't there was, a dummy uh, uh, there that there was just figure those two things out. There was cunt who had a bit of fucking masking tape who went, look at my invention. <laughs> right. I'm just Put these things together. It's like it's like a Brian Regan, like, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Why don't we put the wheels on the luggage? Oh, my God. <laughs> Remember, yeah. you had to pack the rack, too, just so you could roll through rack. the airport? But they were the people that were like, wow, look at that guy. Yeah. He's fucking rolling his luggage. Yep. We're still lugging this fucking... And the luggage is all hard. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a sh hard shell and case. It, and it had it. a big silver fucking metal buckle. <laughs> like a bumper. You to, like, like, like it's like a huge briefcase. <laughs> yeah. We had to go kunk and it came up. And if that thing rusted, it never quite clicked back in. Yeah. And you just see him flipping up as they're coming out. My grandfather, to the day he died, had fucking one of those suitcases. He never converted over. No. No. He, he, he used to call them a port as well, which is like a Queensland term. They call them ports, not suitcases. Homeless Jim writes, they can make a silencer for a gun, but not for a dentist drill. <laughs> yeah. I think you want that drill to be fucking silent. No, but it's also the silencer goes on the end of the noisy bit. Yeah. You put a silencer on the end of a drill, then all of a sudden you're just having a silencer rubbed against your teeth. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't right, quite work out. <laughs> all right, maybe. I've already cracked that one. Fair enough. <laughs> We're going to break. Jim Jeffries, we love when he stops by, and um, he's going to be at Levity Live, West Nyack, at the Palisade Center. Two shows tonight, two shows Saturday, one show Sunday. I don't even know if there are tickets available. I, I would. I, I have no idea. I assume there is. I think it's quite a big place. It is. It's so a nice, yeah. really nice room, man. And, uh, and I haven't really plugged it that much, so I was hoping that you know, being on here would. Holy fuck, man! Yeah, you get to see Jim Dr Jeffries. Come on, let's do yeah. this. If tickets are sold out. You can wait until noon and then get them uh, and see him down at the State Theater in Maryland. Yeah, it's true. Maybe we but wrote. I'm going to be in like New Jersey next week. So <laughs> you can come to where. That one. I, I doubled up for some reason because I had to cancel. I'm doing bananas in Hasbrook or Haysbrook or something. Hasbrook Heights. Hasbrook Jersey. Heights next week, but I've cancelled it like several times. So I think I think I, I I owe it to this club and also to all the people who have cancelled it a couple of times. So you come back next week too. I'll be back again next week if you guys are having me. Fuck yeah! yeah. All right, cool. Uh, we got a break with a little Black History Month thing, and we continue Ooh. with Jim Jeffries. This thing's a fucking mesh <laughs> together or something. It's up to you if you want to mention that. <laughs> Jim Jeffries in studio playing uh, Levity Live, West Nyack, all weekend long. Great club, I'm telling you. Uh, the guys from Gotham put it together, I think. I believe they did, actually. And, uh, yeah, they did, they're doing a good job. Real nice room. I heard good things. You're going to have a good time. Have the cookies. Fresh-baked, huge fucking cookies. Oh, uh, it's not these fucking way to kind of have cookies. No. Yeah, it's just I'm getting fatter by the second. You know. <laughs> I am. I, like, I lost all the weight before I filmed the FX thing, and then it, I gained like it took like to make ten pounds was like a month. Yeah. Gained ten pounds, no fucking time at all. 
And I'm it 35 takes so long to get now. Rid of I it. Can't, yeah, I can't get rid of it. I have fat jeans, man. <laughs> my my mum is pissed in my jean pool so badly that I I'm lucky not you, to be just fucking waddling around. You're right supposed now. to be a fat guy. You think you have fat brothers? I, I yeah, all three of us are fucking swimming against the tide. Yeah. No, you look like a normal size, though. You yeah, look... but I, I'm a fat. I could how, be real fat, me. How, how fat? Is and your I mom? would love it as well. Like I'm, I'm not one of these people that, like, you know, when you meet people who are like, oh, I can't believe people eat McDonald's. It's so fucking just, I nah, fucking love it. All, all shit. <laughs> all that shit. I could shovel shit into my mouth all fucking day, deep fried crap and burgers. That's all I want to really? eat. I got to the point where I just feel like shit if I eat like that. And that prevents me from going there. Uh, every, but every time I do, I love it. Yeah, you're yeah, right. yeah. I don't. I'm not gonna. My body's changed. I guess. I I feel like I'm getting poisoned. Hey, you, well, you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, exactly how fat is your mom? My mom uh, depends. Like at the moment, she's a bit thinner because she's been in the hospital for a while. But we uh, over 300 pounds. And how how big is your dad? My dad's only a little skinny fella. Oh, he's he liked the uh, chubby ones, huh? No, 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 no. My my dad actually, he fucking. Uh, What's that bad to say? He, no, he. he, okay. he I think I think my dad wasn't a confident. I got a little excited. I like, oh, my, your dad's a chubby chaser. I think when he met my mother, she was just a curvy lass, the type of luck girl you'd throw it in if you're a bit drunk and you were into tits. Right? Yeah. And I think, because my dad will say things to, like, he obviously doesn't like my mom's weight because he'll say things to you. Like, when I remember being very young and my dad said to me, he goes, uh, when, when you go out with a girl, try to find one that's naturally thin. <laughs> and and if, she, if she isn't naturally thin, make sure she works out like, like she's a health nut almost until it's an illness. <laughs> See, he's basically trashing oh, your mom. Until it's an illness. <laughs> oh, it's, it's an illness, yeah. He's trashing your mom. These curvy girls, they're a lot of fun, but don't take them too seriously. Holy shit. And he, he, he's right, though. Yeah. So she just had some nice curves when she was uh, young. She was a... Yeah. Big, big boobs. Big tits, yeah, solid unit. Yeah, but she, but she says things to me now, because I'm 35 now, and she had me when she was 35. She says things to me like, like, oh, you're gaining weight. I was never as big as you at that age, right? Like as a warning, like, ooh. It's like she, she thinks that, that fucking photos haven't been invented. <laughs> like I actually have to get her a photograph and go, here you are holding me as big as a fucking house. Stop telling me how fucking fat I am right now. <laughs> oh, God. It's true, though. <laughs> what, you, do what, you, what is do, it? What is it? You just brought up a memory. What is it about moms? My mom has no problem. I, I don't see her often at all, but right. when I do, she'll point out everything that's going bad on me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, getting a little gray, I see. Oh, losing a little hair on top, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're a little uh, softer uh, oh, these God. days. Like, really? But my, you want me to point out your fucking flaws? But my mother also thinks I'm the most handsome man that's ever lived. Yeah. Well, tell me everything is going wrong, but I can be watching, like, a movie... And Brad Pitt will be on, and, and I know what she's about to say. You know what? Oh, no. He's not as good looking as you. <laughs> I, remember, I, remember, I remember once when I was, uh, when my mother came to see me do a gig when I first started out. I was doing a gig, and my girlfriend at the time was sitting next to my mother. And she swears this is what happened. My, I came out on stage, and my girlfriend went, ah, oh, isn't he cute? And my mother went, and sensual as well. <laughs> <laughs> So she fucking loves the hell out of you. Oh, yeah, I'm the youngest, you know. I'm yeah. fucking, but Adam, the, baby. the thing is, I'm not a good-looking guy, but out of my two brothers, I'm a fucking model. You you're know, the, you're I, the guy. Yeah, I, we have a, we're an ugly family of people. <laughs> we're, not, we're fucking trolls. Like, the fact that occasionally I get an acting job, and I'm, you know... Even though in saying that with acting, what I found really weird in Hollywood, is since I've gotten out, I never acted before that, and you go read for a part, and it turns out that I'm, depending on what week it is and whether I've put any effort into my looks, I can either go for a good-looking part of the ugliest man in the world. <laughs> and, and, and so they send you for these parts, and you'll go in, and in the waiting room, there'll be like, let's say one actor's name's Kevin, and then the other one's Dan. And all the, all the Dans are really good-looking guys with fucking chiseled looks and open shirts and tans. Like, and then all the fucking... Kevin's are just like fat, retarded people <laughs> just all sitting there just going, well, you know, I might as well not lose the weight. It's what I've got going for me in this acting world, yeah. right? And then, like, sometimes I'll walk up the stairs and the lady behind the counter will, won't know what script to give me. 
Yeah, like that's depressing. Oh, like, really? Oh, is he a Kevin oh, or a no. Dan? I don't He's, know. That's not good. Yeah, this guy's in no man's land. So you got to commit either way. I got to commit. This is what I'm thinking. You got to go gotta, chisel look, or you got to gain about if, fifty pounds. If I get really fat, I think I could get more work. It's, it's you, like you, like you, Jonah Hill or whatever. Who wants him now that he's skinny? Fat was his thing. Fat was his thing. Yeah. Mm. You 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 do pretty good though. I've seen you out. Right. I've seen you out. You you got I game. Do. I got game. You got yeah. game. I got an know? accent. I got an accent. Yeah, you got the accent. Yeah. And, and girl, girls seem to be you know attracted to you. Girls yeah. like me. Yeah. Yeah. I did yeah. good. <laughs> I do. I do good. Yeah. Right. Me do what? good. Yeah. Mom, yeah. Fuck you, mom. <laughs> Why is your mom? People the, do like me. Why is your mom in the hospital? She um. <laughs> uh, okay, he, he I, I, I was out there just before. I was in the, the month of December. I was out for Christmas. So I did some gigs in the month of December. And what happened was, she was. Uh, I was in Melbourne at the time doing some gigs, but she lived in Sydney, and she she was walking along with her cane, holding a plate, and we're talking like one mile an hour, like the slowest, like Yoda walks. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that little. Eh, eh, now, now she's always wanted a fucking cuckoo clock. You know, the little bird comes out right on the hour. So what, last time I was in Germany, she made me fucking, because they couldn't mail the one. She just likes me to fucking go through pain of carrying this fragile clock. So I bring this cuckoo clock back from Germany to her a few years ago. Well, that fucking stung her in the ass, because as she walked by at one mile an hour, on the hour, fucking cuckoo clock came out and startled her. As it would, like that's got to be fucking terrifying. <laughs> little, little little tiny bird going cuckoo like that coming out of the fucking thing. Anyway, that was enough for her to drop the plate that she was holding in her other hand, and then she sort of lost the balance completely. <laughs> oh shit! And she fell over. I imagine quite slowly, and she fell over, and her knee smashed into the plate and just shredded her whole fucking because her skin's like diabetic paper, <laughs> right? And, and, and the whole thing just, just there. And my father, who she has hated for over 30 years, went, Gary, Gary. And then my dad comes out and he's like, oh, what the fuck's going on here? And she's lost like three pints of blood, which is, like, I don't know, it's like nine pints of blood or 12 pints of blood or something in the human body. And so, but she lost a fucking shitload of blood, right? So she's there bleeding. So this is what happened. My dad rings me up, right? And he goes, he goes, oh, yeah, your mum's had a bit of a fall. She fell over. She's hit a plate, and there's blood everywhere. She was screaming, and I came out, and I bandaged it up, right? He's not worried about it. He's just talking about how good his bandaging skills are. I bandaged it up really good. He goes, then the ambulance came, and they said I did a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, like, that was like December the 18th. And she's still fucking in there because her knee just gets infected. Oh, shit, and, yeah, and I think And, and the physio, physiotherapist doesn't, like, she won't get out of bed. So I go in and visit her on, like, uh, like December 23rd, and I go in, and she's eating a fucking shitty meal, and they give her a little strawberry cheesecake thing with a little fucking spoon. And I said, what the... F and the nurse came in. I was acted all like the good son. I said, excuse me, to the nurse. I said, who's giving my diabetic mother... Fucking strawberry cheesecake for dinner, and the and the nurse looks at the chart like, oh, you're meant to be on the diabetics thing, and then my mum looks at me like I'm a fucking tattleteller, <laughs> <laughs> like she grabs onto that dessert with a little nailed up claw for all fucking life, and she just goes. <laughs> said I could, the doctor said I could, and then the, and then the nurse just shrugs his shoulder, shrugs his shoulders like, yeah, we've been over this, I don't give a fuck, have your fucking strawberry cheesecake, you can tell they fight her all day about the strawberry cheesecake, and she's still fucking having it, so because she's a diabetic, she has to have like uh, chocolate and stuff in case she has hypo attacks, or a bit of lemonade if her blood sugar gets too low, uh -huh. they got to have that stuff around. Yeah, isn't that fucked up? That's exactly what happens, the thing you're not supposed to have is, is the thing you, actually saves you. You have to have that in the house, yeah. Go. Yeah. So her mum's in the hospital, and I know she's just fucking sneaking chocolates because she's like this. She goes, uh, she goes, oh, there's a box of chocolates you have to bring in in case I get a hypo attack. And I go, so you're trying to tell me you're in a fucking hospital where they have those machines that go poof, clear, <laughs> yet they don't have the special hypo medicine for you if you get a little bit too low on your sugar level. They've got no bit of equipment, no little sugary beverage they can give you. I have to bring you in chocolates. And she goes, yes, that's what that's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Sounds like bringing a junkie heroin. Oh, there you go. If I can get oh, into it. Oh fuck, man. <laughs> Let me uh, say hi to Simon in Australia. Are you calling ah. from Australia, Simon? Yeah. 
Yes, yes, I am. So you're listening to us right now online? Uh, yep. That's fucking I cool. I don't love as well. On Pal Talk, that's but, fucking um, cool, man. The world's getting smaller, right? It's yeah. getting smaller. Yes, it is. Uh, what do you got, Simon? I just wanted to say to Jim Jeffries, being one of the only 25 people in Australia that know who he is, that he's pretty much the perfect representation of Australians. Like, anything Jim says is pretty much how every cool Australian acts. And Jason Ellis <laughs> is pretty much how every bad Australian acts. Yeah, basically, you want to say he's very underrated uh, in Australia, right? Well, I, I started my career in England, but when I went back to Australia last time, I sold very well. It turns you out they, well? They, they must have just gotten the internet. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> People are referencing the YouTube clips. Those things are working out. Yeah, that's got to be frustrating to go back to Australia uh, yeah, but for never, a while there and they didn't really know you. I yet. never did any stand up there, so I'm pretty comfortable with that. Really. Okay, good, good, yeah. Anything else, Simon? And like any, and like any other typical Australian, he fucks off to England after finishing high school as well. You fucked off. Yeah, well, that's what you got to do. You go you fuck off. You're supposed to, to leave. This, well, this is the thing, right? There's a bit of your brain that goes, if fucking, if if they got their convicts and sent them over to this beautiful country, how good must that place fucking be? And then you get there and you go, oh, this is way shitter. Really? But it's like the whole punishment of the convicts. It's like, hey, fuck you. You're not going to live in rain in this shitty fucking black plague environment. What's the what's the closest place to Australia? I don't even know. Uh, Indonesia and Singapore and all that type of stuff on the top, and then you well, got. Where's New the closest place the average Australian would go? Well, that's that's it. People oh, go, go to, there. Go up to uh, Bali and stuff like that. Yeah. How many hours is that? Well, it depends what part of Australia you're in. All right, in, in, in general, give me some basic shit. You know, here. like an average sort of five, like four or five hours. Oh, okay. Like to go to that's another country. Yeah, it's not, it's not like to go up to Bali, it's not that bad. Yeah. But like New Zealand, I think from Sydney is like a four hour flight or something like that. If you four want hour to. flight? You've been to New Zealand? <laughs> no, why would I go to New Zealand? There's like, there's I like, hear it's great. Yeah, but uh, nature wise. I hear Canada's great. Have you been? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, but did you enjoy us? Or did you just sort of go, I would have rather spent this time going to Mexico? And I, liked getting... Mo I liked Montreal. I do like Montreal. The women in Toronto Montreal are well sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, French Montreal. Canadian women. I don't know what it is about them, but. And yeah, mm. and it's a good walking city. Old city, new city. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, I liked Montreal a lot. Toronto, not so much. That, that was a bore. One of the best shags I ever had was a French Canadian girl. Yeah. If she's listening, I doubt she is. She hardly speaks English. <laughs> I she is. Uh, well, that's she a stretch. Is. Yeah. That's a stretch right there. I'm sure about that one. Yeah, she is nice. She's married with a couple of kids now. I still hold out a chance. Yeah. <laughs> Simon, anything else? You're good, right? No, I just, Jim, how can, you know, how can you have introduced these guys to the brilliance of, like, Steady Eddie? What, you want, you want to talk about Australian stand-up comedians? I'm, I'm too busy talking about myself trying to big up fucking... Yeah. Steady Eddie is... Steady Eddie is... a guy? Is a stand-up comedian. He's got cerebral palsy, so you know oh. we think that's pretty fun. He's not. A, he's quite a good stand-up comedian, but the the whole the whole all of his routines are basically about like, you know, I was doing. I read the Carmel Sutra the other day, and I thought this isn't so awesome. I get into the same positions doing my shoelaces up. Like I would be, <laughs> right, yeah. which is funny yeah, yeah. if if you're all twisted like a pretzel. Can we get a clip on YouTube of Steady Eddie? He's, he's, he's exactly what he does in the tin. <laughs> like you're not gonna look at it and go, oh, that's alarming. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jeffrey. Uh, hey, he's got big crowd. Oh, geez. yeah, you see. All right, it's just uncomfortable for everybody. Uh, what you think it's uncomfortable for you? How is everyone? Good. I just got back from America. He's not retarded. That's just I an Australian accent. Really. <laughs> Interesting about myself, I'm no longer disabled. <laughs> Looks like so much work to just live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Living is, a, is just a chore. Apparently now I'm physically challenged. <laughs> yeah, move, move the microphone stand out of the way, it's very unprofessional. Can you imagine Ian Turvey standing there going, and welcome to Physically Challenged. <laughs> Steady Eddie, come on down. Anyway, thank you, Simon, uh, for the phone uh, call. All right, thanks, guys. All right, brother. That was, that was odd. <laughs> huh? This is the bloke from Australia. Yeah, you just try shit, see what yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah, trying to say See what sticks. We got to get rolling. Uh, we gotta What's get he up to? 
we got to give away one last pair of uh, Bruce Springsteen tickets. Are you? Big? Oh, we have Bruce tickets. Yeah, one more pair. We have to do it today. I, so. I don't mind these things. I just hate when people think he's a spiritual artist. That, that Philadelphia song that people say that it meant so much to them. They love it. He's just rambling on about fucking nothing. <laughs> just, you could say fucking anything in that song. I uh, was walking along. I saw a guy with a dog. He was walking his dog. I thought, that's a nice dog. In the streets of Philadelphia. And it's like not even got a tune. I was bumming a guy. I got some AIDS. It upset me for a while. I lost a bit of weight. That was enjoyable. In the streets, you know, like just, and people think it's like, people are like are fucking nodding their head like, wow, this guy's inspirational. Yeah. It's all bollocks. Well, Roland, but if you want to get some tickets. Roland is literally the biggest Bruce Springsteen fan Bruce. in the country. He's the biggest fan of many things. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a fan of Jeremy Lin, I say. He's wearing the t-shirt. Who's Jeremy Lin? Oh, God. A basketball oh, is he, the, is he the, the goose fella who plays the basketball? Came out, came out of nowhere, though. That's I'll, the story I'll, there. I love how when you get an Asian who's really tall, it's like, that you are, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you, there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the uh, talk of the town. The Do, toast of New York. What do you York, mean he right just came out of nowhere? Did they just sign him from some Asian team? And, or, no, he was... Or is he an American Asian? He was kind of in the NBA program, but no one gave... Gave a care, and then the Knicks picked him up and uh, threw him in the starting position, and he's just been on fire. And I got a Jeremy Lin T-shirt, but I don't want to wear it now that everyone else is wearing it. Well, now, yeah, you, know you look I mean? like a bandwagon guy. Yeah, oh, you just just go back to your Tebow outfit. Yeah, I'm going to go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you can tell the seasons. All right, let's get these tickets out of the way, Roland. This is the last pair for the March 9th show at the Apollo Theater, celebrating 10 years of satellite radio. That's what Sirius XM is doing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready well, for this? I enjoy that. Uh, I, yeah. I don't think there's going to be a 20th anniversary show. There will not be a 20th anniversary <laughs> of satellite radio. They allowed everyone to catch up. That was smart. Uh, Roland. Yes. I'm excited. You all right today? Yeah, I'm good. Why the Jeremy Lynn stuff? She's an exciting. I really. You've never talked about the Knicks before in your know. life. <laughs> this is what this Jeremy Lin has done. What nationality is he? Asian. Yeah, it's not a country. I know. I don't know. I, I'll go Chinese. Yeah, they're all right. They're on our team. Because they, they had the game on in Chinatown, so I would assume that's the, the tie-in. Mm. Yeah. We're too tired to talk about Jeremy Lin or we give you more <laughs> info. It's just been all-encompassing. No, he might be weeks. he might be Japanese or something. No, he? he's... No, man, he's Chinese. You can yeah. tell by looking. He's right. Chinese, right? I think so. Roland, you ready? I am ready. Uh, Jim Jeffries, pick a number between one and nine, please. Eight. Eight? All right, this is Chris in New Jersey. Chris, good luck. Thanks, man. All right, Roland, let's do this. Are you a big Springsteen fan? Yeah, I am. Wow, you're nervous or something. You really need mm -hmm. these tickets, huh? Bit, yeah, a little bit. Let me go to the hard question. Oh, by the way, Roland doesn't want anyone to win. No, or, he, he, really, no he, he gets the tickets. He really loves uh, right, when when people lose. Right, how's that? Wow, and he, he said he'll take tickets. you. Yeah, oh. I believe yeah. that shit. Really? But Roland wants you. How <laughs> fucking ugly is your girlfriend, mate? <laughs> Roland, Roland loves to make it hurt because it's it's a that's a long story too. But yeah, all right, go ahead, Roland. Uh, Bruce Song, the Ghost of Tom Joad, was inspired by the John Ford film. What is the name of the film? I want to say uh, The Grapes of Wrath. No, wrong. It was Clueless with Alicia Silverstone. <laughs> I think he got it. <laughs> he got what? It. I think he got it. He did. Oh, Roland. You thought that was a hard question? Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. shit. That How was is shit, that a hard Roland. question? I should have done this one. Here's the one okay. I was... You got it, mate. Chris, you got tickets Whoa. to see Bruce Springsteen. Oh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to waste... Baby, you're going to Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> right? We don't want to waste too much time on this anyway, because we've got Jim Jeffries in yeah. studio, so I'm glad yeah. it worked out this yeah. way. But Not that's an easy shit. question, I think. I, I didn't thought it was too easy. Can I ask another question? Let's see if we can get one of them. Let's see how difficult you think you are. This one I was going to ask. Near the end of the Working on the Dream Tour, Springsteen and the Eastry Band performed The River in its entirety for the first time Madison Square Garden in New York City. What was the day, the month, and the year? November 8th, 2009. You got it? 
I would have said... Uh, These things are as easy as piss when you're reading over your shoulder. I do think yeah. it, was no, it was in November, I believe that. Chris, hold on a line. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I do know this. You're, you got tickets to Springsteen. Congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. All right, Line 8 got the tickets. Thank you, Roland. Anything else you want to say, Roland? No, I'm sad. What are you going to do this weekend? Uh, nothing, because the 7 train's down. Woo! What? But, no, the 7 train's down, so. So you're. So that just ruins uh, your whole social So you're calendar? disconnected from Manhattan? Well, the, it's a pain in the ass. You have to take the ferry or take the bus over to, like, three other stops, and I say fuck it. You get a taxi. Eh, it's it's a long line. So. I could give you some taxi money. <laughs> Ooh, I'll, just, I'll just give it to you. I'm, I, don't, I don't want you to ruin your whole weekend. How does weekend. your whole social life shut down because the seven train stops running? It's a, just a pain in the ass. So you're going to like wander around Queens, see what, if there's anything going on there? You know yeah, what, you know what you need? Show you, around. <laughs> you need some local friends that live right near you. Mm. Yeah, you, may, you make friends with the neighbors yet? Yeah. No. Have a, have a, have a block party. I stay in my apartment and watch Netflix. <laughs> God. Is that your life? Do you have a cotton candy machine? I, uh, someone was just... Uh, someone, Eric. Yeah, and snow cone maker. Really? You, you have a cotton candy yeah. and snow cone maker you, you in know, your house? You, you know the next thing you're going to need is an insulin maker. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, E-Rock, have you seen this thing? No, but he's been talking about it for so long that he, go, that he has a cotton candy machine... He'll play Uncharted on PlayStation, and he just stays at home and has food delivery. Why don't you have a mm. cotton candy machine in your compound, man? Yeah, That'd be need that fucking... for. Yeah. That'll just come in to play as evidence against <laughs> me. <laughs> Why would he have a cotton candy machine in his house if he wasn't trying to lure young yeah. girls? Into... Why, why is there a box of tissues next to the machine? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's Not the other... napkins, tissues. What's <laughs> yeah. the other machine you have? Uh, the snow cone maker. Oh, snow cone. What, what about that, Ant? I love that, snow cones. Nah, that's I'm shit's I'm not big overrated. on snow cones. Oh, well, that's I'm not big on the ice snow cones. flavoring. Get the I, I, I like yeah, ice. What the fuck is this? Primitive times? Exactly. I and the that. king would get ice with flavors from... I, I have a hot dog machine. Oh, you yeah, do? It has the hot dogs rotating in a Ooh. bun warmer underneath. That's pretty good. Ooh, uh, it's a perfectly sane thing to eat. Was it your grandma and my grandma? Uh, we told the story where when they were growing up, they would lick a fucking a block of ice for five cents a lick or something. How pathetic oh boy! Were they? What kind of what's that code for? Was, was your grandmother a horse? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If she had to change it into an ice block in her head to oh boy, maybe live <laughs> to <laughs> sleep at night. <laughs> Supposedly that's how pathetic they were growing up. Yeah, like the ice man would come by, and I don't know. I think he got some licks off the big ice cube, <laughs> carrying around his ice just with a handle. <laughs> yeah, no wheels on it. All right, Ron. The Ice Man. Enjoy your weekend in your apartment with your candy, cotton candy machine. I think. I think now that I've heard that about Roland's life, I feel like he's just the most eligible bachelor ever. <laughs> a cotton candy and a snow cone machine. That is fucking. There's a man that you couldn't even buy a stylish. present for Roland. The nah. man who has everything. <laughs> Eric was telling me there's a there's a broad around here that might have a crush on him. On Roland. Where was it, Mars? Who was telling me? Mars, I think. Where's Mars? Do he's, you know anything about this era? He's very, yeah, very we, we he's talk, a very nice man. We talked about it uh, on the after show. That, uh, that is it a real crush, or she wants something from I, Roland? I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I suspect that this person really likes Roland. She's always looking for him. She left him a Valentine. What? Mm. Roland? Oh, yeah. Man. Ah. Sorry for the surprise in my voice. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I know. That's like what? Really? <laughs> a valen a Valentine? Have we seen this girl? What, no, what, I don't think you guys have. What is a Valentine? Is that just a card? Or is that chocolate it was, it was based on a heart-shaped box of chocolates with a little card on top? That's yeah. the last thing. Maybe they're trying to kill him. Valentine's were a big thing when we were growing up. You fucking... I never got any. My birthday's on Valentine's Day, so I never get shit. Oh, but ain't, but oh, I, never got any, I never got any when I was growing up, but I, I didn't want the whole school system to change their ways because I didn't get one. Now the school systems, they insist everyone gets one. Well, oh, see, this is the thing. In my school... They had, uh, you used to be able to send flowers anonymously, a carnation anonymously to a girl. So you could send like a, a white flower for friendship, pink flower for love, and a red flower for lust, right? And the, the, they'd be de delivered at a certain class, a certain time. You could write a little message and keep it all anonymous, right? Now, because it was my birthday, a lot of my mates would send me like a red flower in a jokey way. Yeah. Right? Now, I'm a fucking spoonhead, right? And... 
But, like, on my birthday, my dad would be walking around with all these red flowers. So the girls in the younger years who didn't know it was my birthday, they thought, there must be something going on around him. He's very mysterious. <laughs> why mysterious? Is he, why is he getting so many red flowers? So I always, he always got a bit more female action around my birthday. So the oh. difference, uh, when I say action, like, finger to chick. <laughs> finger pop. A, a little finger action. pop. Yeah. Some action. Sometimes you would get to For back in the day, I remember especially. fingering when I was young where I just shoved the finger in. Not knowing what you're doing, just poking at just, it. Not poke, even, poke, poke, not poke, even poke. poke back and forth. Just like, all right, we're in. <laughs> just, just we're in. And hold this, it there. Just let it marinate. <laughs> <laughs> and that fucking thirteen-year-old vagina. Uh, I didn't get the fucking Valentine's because I was always really small for my size. People were saying because I was the stinky kid. I, lo I look oh. like I, you can't use that. When that, I was six, that, that sentence doesn't work. I'm really small for my size. You're really small for your age. Your size Small is your for size. My age, right? Yeah. I, I I looked like I was twelve when I was sixteen, seventeen years old. It was a nightmare. Mm. When did you lose your virginity? How old were you? I was eighteen in college. Jeez, I'd say. Yeah, first semester in college. I was late, man. Real fucking yeah, late. Yeah, it's pretty late. I was pretty I was fifteen when I lost it, and then I didn't do it again till I was almost eighteen. But that I got was it out the, of the worst. Way. That's the worst thing about what uh, you had to wait three early. years after getting it one time. That's that's even crazier. I yeah, didn't know but, what I was but, missing. But I got, yeah. to, I got to say to everyone, no, I'm not a virgin. I've done it. Fucking, yeah. Yeah, but you, then you're, 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 all you want to do is do it then. She was a smashing-looking broad as well, but yeah. I, I'd like to meet her again. If, if you're listening, Samantha Cranswick, get in contact with me. Ah, <laughs> Another Samantha. girl you want to get in contact Where is she? You think she's listening? Where is she I, from? She, she was from Queensland. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, so I don't, nice. I don't, but the guy That's from where Australia, Australian yeah. Bobo's from. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, Queen's fine. <laughs> I liked it. How, how old are you? Uh, what? When you lost your virginity. When I lost my virginity? Uh, 13. Jeez, that's, you're, you're the shit, aren't you? 13? God, yeah, yeah, know. yeah. It was, how, uh, how old was she? She must have been like 11. That must have been no, she, no. Was, she was actually older, 19. What? Yeah. That's 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 crazy. Age that's difference, fucking creepy. Age, age difference what? is crazy, but 13-year-old... And a 19-year-old broad? Wow. Be, it was fantastic. No, no, no. Good, I don't think good it's for you. Right. It's, but it's like that whole thing whenever they, they say that there was like uh, there was like a school student who's been molested by a teacher. Right, yeah, when yeah, it's yeah. a man, it's disgusting. When it's like right. uh, like fucking, like you're proud of that 13-year-old boy, aren't you? You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. she's all right, buddy. Yeah, good she... Uh, like that bird who went to prison several times for that little Samoan kid that she... And right, she's now and they ended up marrying They're married. kids. And... She was quite a tasty broad, her. Yeah, yeah. Or that other one, that fucking, what was her name? The one that was the model for the biker magazine oh, and shit. Oh, yeah, remember her, the blonde. Yeah. I forgot their names now. We, we have this theory that if you're an ugly teacher, they give you time. Right. But they let the hot ones sort of slide. Or if they have to do time, they do the easy time. They know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They that, know. That chick was in and out. They know out that kid's not suffering. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hot. exactly right. I don't know. I don't know one of my friends that wouldn't have taken a, a little something something from an older teacher. Of course. And not be, you know, but fucked I, I, up I, by it. I have to stop you there. My mother was my teacher. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm not saying I wouldn't have. But I then just would have kept it more discreet. But if it's a 13-year-old girl and a 20-year-old fucking science teacher, then, you know, it's a completely different thing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. Guys dreamed crazy. of that growing up, that you had that, you know, that hot teacher. You can't, um. Making the move. We had that one teacher but, that was basically a pedophile who used to just lecture on, <laughs> you know, that lectures on all the girls. I remember we came back, like, we were in, like, year eight or something, so we were about 14. And we all sat in class, and his opening line was, well, I hope you've had a good summer's break. I hope you're all doing well. Oh, I see Allison's grown some tits. And oh, I even remember no. being, <laughs> it was no. his opening line, we were like... Paul Marquette was his name. I can't can say do that, that anymore. Fucking music teacher. He got kicked out of the teaching profession for that fucking <laughs> for other incidences that happened. I finally caught up. Oh yeah, yeah. He had some. Yeah, fucking... You know, you make a good point though. I remember my high school. There was always one teacher that all the girls hung out with. What was that about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the cool was teacher. Was he getting some shit done? You think? Mm, probably. At least getting. At least for himself. You know, kind of maybe jacking maybe, off or something. Maybe basic shit he was getting. Mm, yeah. A little mm, look yeah. at something. You can't get laid. Early on, and not have other like prospects uh, Lined for up. years to come. If you get laid at fucking 13, 14 years old, and you got to wait till 18 to get it again, all, your whole life is just yeah. going to fucking be that's hell on earth. going crazy. It, it, it was bad. every minute of the day. That's all you're going to think of. Well, I, what did was very, her name? I did very good at 18. 
Well, that's the chick Deborah, right there. Uh, Deborah Lafay. Oh, yeah, she was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deborah Lafay. She was by far the hottest teacher the ever. Ju- She's the, so the hot. The judge was smitten with her, like for the case. Remember that? He was like chuckling and looking at her, smiling. She didn't see one day in jail. She was fucking she'd, some kid. She'd be dynamite in bed. Because you know, she, if she's doing that with a kid, she just likes fucking getting off anyway she can. I love her. Can we get in touch with her in some way? Well, maybe she's oh. listening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Putting hey, all these shout outs out there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> fucking Jeffries is using our show for shout outs. <laughs> Old girlfriends <laughs> and such. <laughs> I love you, brother. Shut up. You know that. I fucking love this guy. <laughs> I got to use what I can. I don't have a popular radio show to do my shout outs on. Yeah, the podcast does well. Podcast does well. Doing well. We, right? had, we had Kato Kalen on the other day. Kato, he, huh? He was fucking awesome. He's like yeah. the nicest guy in the world. I'm sure you've already had him. We had uh, him all once. Yeah, though. years ago. He was fucking dead nice. Yeah. And I thought he'd be a clown. And you think, oh, he's not going to talk about OJ. Fucking loves to talk about it. <laughs> and that's all he's got in his life. Oh, yeah, he's well up What else for has it? he done? I don't know. OJ. Yeah, he, he, he's willing to uh, talk about his days living at the house and yeah, yeah. all that shit, huh? He goes, he came back all sweaty and, like, really flustered wearing one glove. And oh, he, he thinks he totally, he, he knows he killed <laughs> those people. He knows it. Kato's like, fuck yeah, he killed them. <laughs> I heard a banging. On the air conditioning, and <laughs> they all uh, knew. They all knew OJ did. OJ, and now Come OJ's on. in prison anyway, so they got him. God, how do you fuck that up? Get him for he you. Got, got away him. with murder. Got away with murder, and then he gets fucking he's arrested for stealing his own shit back. He's basically it, getting a murder wasn't sentence. It, out wasn't it like he murdered murdered her in um, Santa Monica? But because he drove into a black neighborhood and got arrested there, he had a black jury. And that really helped him out, and it was all because of the Rodney King thing. Oh. So if he actually didn't drive all that distance, he never would have gotten away with it. Yeah, maybe, huh? And, and Kato was saying that he goes, they were all smiling and waving at him when he used to come into the room. They fucking loved him. <laughs> like all the jury. Uh, Dude, they're, you know, people forget, but man, OJ was a rock star. Yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. loved that guy. Yeah. Everybody. We need a good... Across, a... across racial lines, everyone loved OJ, man. Yeah. Thanks. Not so much these days. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, how is he making it? He had like the world by the balls. Fucking white women, all the white women he wanted. Yeah, they're now the he's best, in aren't they? White prison. Women. Ah, who love, love them. white women? They love them. <laughs> Getting beat up because I said I lost my virginity late at 18, and this idiot goes, Opie, some people still wait for marriage. I that? wasn't waiting for marriage. I yeah, just, why, is, I, why I, is that cunt listening to this show then? Right. I wasn't waiting for marriage. I just didn't, uh, I couldn't get it. Couldn't get it done. Yeah. Looked like a fucking wimp most of my uh, junior and high school years. It's hard the first time, though, isn't it? Just to convince someone to... I still get amazed by sex to this day. That I get amazed that, like, if I like a person, what is the chances of them liking me as well? That's like a billion to one. <laughs> he doesn't like a... think of it that way. That's yeah. hilarious. Like, that's like... Because I hate most people. It's very rare that I like one. Yeah. And I'm intensely unlikable. So I, I don't know how it happens. And then, like, to, like, for another person to agree, like, just, like... Can I put my genitals into your genitals? <laughs> and for them to go, yeah, yeah, sure. That's fucking, that's like, that's like winning the lottery. <laughs> that is crazy when you think of it that way. Oh, I, I God, like you dude. so much, I'm just going to stick my genitals inside your genitals. Yeah, like, like there's people that you don't like if they put their arm around you. Like right. I do have photos afterwards, this guy's like somebody puts their arm around me for a photo and they hold me a bit tight. Right. And it's like, I, this person, I wish they would stay away from me. And then there's other people in the world that you're like, I would like to rub on you yeah. back and forth for ages and ages till I stink. <laughs> and until you stink and I cause a mess and we're both uncomfortable, are you up for this? And they're like, yep. And you're like, yeah. never thought that would be the answer. <laughs> Uh, God damn, that's great, yeah. What are the odds? You're right. It's you like, got one one person that wants to yeah, do that. I can't get two of my friends to agree on what restaurant we're going to. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to get someone to agree to, you know, have you put their gen- your genitals in there. Yeah, and, and just and fucking right, cause a mess. And the, wor- the worst was when you were growing up. When you realize, wait, you don't think like I'm thinking right now? That's, and you try to wrap your head around that. Yeah, why? What? No, I, no, yeah, I, we're gonna do it? this thing because just because I'm attracted to you. What? Do you ever that mate I'm... that mate in school that like you found out years later that he was gay, 
But like when you were young, you just thought, geez, he just, just fucking wants to hold me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had this one mate at school that whenever I stayed the night in his house, I'd always be sleeping on the floor and he'd be like, I oh, don't have to sleep there. Like when we were 11, he goes, you should come up and sleep in my bed with me. Oh and I, I remember just laying next to him looking at the ceiling going, I think I'll go back on the floor now. <laughs> I was very comfortable down there and I, I never pieced together what gay could be. I was just like... Cheesy likes to be uncomfortable in bed, him. That's, wow. That's funny because I was with you and then I was going to go, yeah, like we grew up with a kid that was into speed walking. <laughs> the meaning like why would anyone be into speed walking unless maybe you were a little uh, Oh, no, no. This, different. This, this but guy your example is a lot. Into, just into grabbing my cock. Oh, yeah. man, I didn't, <laughs> didn't really have that experience. Like, wow. like, he was like, well, should we practice kissing on each other? And I'm like, well, I think we should. Whoa. <laughs> I think I'm just going to go in there as an amateur. <laughs> and, and and meanwhile, like before this started happening, you were friends. And, yeah, we were mates. And he wasn't, he never was a camp lad. Like he was never faggy, if I can use that term. Yeah, yeah. And my dad always used to call him, I won't say his name because that's not fair. I'll tell you one thing, right? My brother at one stage, he decided he, he was getting to the age where he had to learn how to unclip a bra. Like he'd had one incident, it hadn't worked out well. Right. Don't tell me you put a bra on. He put a bra on me, right? <laughs> oh, but what, shit. What, what am oh, I, oh, what, how old were you guys? I was, okay, so he was about 14, I was 10, right? Oh, and so he puts a bra on me, but it's my mother's bra, so you have to wrap it around my 10-year-old fucking flimsy frame like three times <laughs> around the thing. So it's all bunched up and wrapped around three times and clicked on. And I just remember him hugging me and trying to get it undone with one hand. And my dad walking and seeing it, just going, "You two are fucking idiots. You are like not even like, not even like. What are you doing? Just you fucking idiots. <laughs> you fucking idiots. Yeah, he knew you. You know, you're not gay. He but you're he just being a fucking idiot. He was just being a fucking idiot. Yeah, just rocking around wearing mum's bra, just hanging out with my bra. <laughs> fucking funny. Holy shit. What's going on? <laughs> getting, getting the bra of a hoarded pile in the living room. <laughs> That was fucking nerve wracking, though, trying to get those bras off back then. Yeah, I, especially I, if they had a few extra fucking clips on there. I still pride myself on how quickly I can do it, but one of the things is, was when I get drunk now. That's one of my idiot moves that I'll literally just undo a woman's bra as I walk by. If I'm wasted drunk, yeah, what the uh, fuck would off. I do that? Yeah, that it that pisses piss people off. off. It shows me to be a fucking asshole, right? But when I'm drunk, the best idea ever, <laughs> ever. Ever. What happens to the brain? It's just it's amazing oh, how you, you'd you never do something like that until you're drinking. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll be I'll be chatting to a girl, and I'll just call her fat halfway through a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like, like thinking, they don't like that. Thinking that I've said a charming joke. <laughs> charming? <laughs> no, they don't like that at all. I do have that theory that when you talk to girls, if they're a really good-looking girl, I go for the you have to find a fault with them really quickly that they can get over. Just to crush him. Yeah. That's my one of my moves. So you just chat. When you chat to a hot girl, you go, why are your hands all veiny and fucked up? What's that? <laughs> well, you look at their feet. Uh, Danny's what? agreeing. He yeah, does well, you that, look at yeah. their feet. You go, why is that second toe overgrowing that big toe? That's, oh. that's like one of the main uh, points of that book, The Game, oh, by, yeah. by Neil Strauss or whoever. Like, that's one of like the main, it's one of the cornerstones of, of the game. Well, I've never read the game. I'm just a Pointing natural out. player, evidently. <laughs> Yeah, pointing out. Yeah, you gotta a take. Them, yeah, you take them down a little bit, and then all of a sudden they're not. You know, they're they're not this this thing that's untouchable anymore. Yeah, yeah. There's a nice dress you got there, but I, uh, mm. not with your shoulders. Patrice what? would always talk about doing stuff like that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he'd see somebody in like the grocery store. But why? Why you need that welfare size macaroni and cheese? Uh, yeah, I'm just playing. And then like all of a sudden now he's talking to some hot chick. Meanwhile, if he never said anything, she would yeah. have, would never have given him the time of day. He was the king of doing that shit. Your chicks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to fucking start our weekend, if you don't mind, Mr. Jeffries. I'm going to bed. Jeffries is, yeah, he hasn't even slept. I just came in on the red eye. You fucking killed, and you haven't even slept yet. You'll, you'll be back next week, though, because you're playing. I'll, I'll come back you're next playing, week. You're uh, playing in Jersey. As long, as long as the club get me cars to drive back and forth, I'll be fucking here. Mm, it's not that I far know, away. I assume they will. Yeah, so, uh. You got Levity Live tonight, West Nyack, all, all weekend long, I should say, at the Palisade, uh, Palisade Center in West Nyack. That's like a posh area, right? The Palisades? Yeah, pretty nice. Like a rich. Nice people. up there, yeah. yeah. Mall's all right. 
I mean, a mall. One. Yeah. That's good. I wander around. I see a movie. It's a nice mall, I'll too. Ca- it's I'll, big. I'll catch Star Wars in 3D. Yeah. Oh, that'd be maybe, good. maybe we're good now that it's 3D. Oh, yeah. It's going to roll. That yeah, was a fucking Jar Jar Binks will just be coming out that, at me. That was a massive <laughs> bust. We haven't really talked about it. They were expecting a lot more fucking money out of that. Yeah. 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 But no. It's it's how much? How bust. can it be a bust, though? It's already made. You already yeah, made true. billions and billions of fool, dollars. And... Fool me once. Yeah. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Yeah. Shame on me. Shame. Fool you three times. Very good. Well done. <laughs> You've done a third <laughs> time. <laughs> and Ant, Ant's got a little vacation. Yeah, vacation oh. coming up. And uh, You going anywhere exciting? Um, well, I don't like telling people where, where I'm going. How I'm leaving or where I'll be and you where I'll say yes. be and shit like that. So I'll just be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, voting ends today uh, at midnight for the Shorty Awards. Mm-hmm. I want uh, I want the award. Please don't fuck me, people. What's the, I need what's the Shorty Awards? I don't know. It's some dumb Twitter thing. Oh, you right. know, I have it for web show. Ooh. I'm nominated in web show, and I've been number one now for a while. I'm the first place there, and uh, I don't want to get nah, swept fine. at the end here. I, so uh, just vote for me uh, for web show. Mm. I, I secretly wanted it, too, but my strategy failed miserably, so I'm out. Oh, no. I was making believe I didn't want it. Sam's that, in. That people would understand that. but Oh, you know what you could do it's before midnight, late. people? It's too late. Push Sam up to uh, first place. In, so uh, he'll be at the table with you. Yeah, yeah. Push right. Sam up to first place in radio because he's only a few points behind the uh, first guy. So uh, in radio and web show. And now that he's no longer with the company, he's really going to really need that. Shorty so Awards. He's going to really need that podcast. Yes, really with exactly. What's happening to Sam? <laughs> We're not allowed to talk about it yet. Ooh. Jim Jeffries, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Anthony, we'll see you in about a week. Yeah, of course. And Thank you for having me. I think Thank that's you, it. Mr. Oh, uh, Jim Norton, I don't know if he needs the help, but Punchline down there in Atlanta all weekend long. Make sure you check out Jim Norton. All right? Chop, yes. chop. That's it. The Opie and Anthony Show.